Uh, wow, wow, wow. We thank the Lord for um, for Dr. Miles. We thank the Lord for uh, Pastor Ruth. We just thank the Lord for Bahamas Faith Ministries. And guess what? A perfect lead in uh, to the pastor um, of Bahamas Faith Ministry, who's on right now, my friend, uh, Dr. Dave Burrows. Yay! <laughs> Praise the Lord, Dr. Dave. You're on with us. Amen. It's good to be with you. Man, I'm just so happy, so thankful, and just so grateful over the years for our relationship. And we're just so thankful to God for you and for Pastor Angie. And how is everyone at Bahamas Faith Ministries? We are TGH. Thankful, grateful, and hopeful. <laughs> Woo, TGH. I love that. Somebody type that in the chat. Thankful, <laughs> grateful, and hopeful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, well, Dr. Dave, you've had experience with us here at the chamber. You've spoken for us on a number of occasions. And with this 20 years, uh, any words that God has placed on your heart for us? Just let the Holy Spirit lead you. Well, I believe it's all about advancing the kingdom, you know, and there are many modalities that God has made available to us to advance the kingdom. And business happens to be one of those modalities, a very important modality. Uh, and so I am blessed to know of the work that you are doing, having been a part of some of the events I've seen firsthand and I've seen the impact. In fact, if you remember, um, you influenced the formation of our business network at the church. And you actually came down as oh our first yes. speaker. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah, so that's that's great, you know. So I, I think, um, you know, Jesus said to go into all the world, preach the gospel. Of course, we know that business is a world that we must go into. And you've been brave enough to take on that mantle. And that is very, very important. It's very significant. You know, I was telling somebody one day, I said, I saw an, uh, uh, an ad on TV where they were having a dinner and the dinner was $250,000 a plate. And I was telling the person that I was talking to, I said, um, what do you think was on the menu that was worth $250,000? And I said, that's not about food. That's about business people who have influence. And so if the president of the United States or the prospective president of the United States is going to demand $250,000 a plate. It tells you how much he values business people and how much they value him. That's it. Business people really uh, influence policy probably more than any other group. You know, when you look at, for example, if you look at the pharmaceutical industry, you know, the pharmaceutical industry sponsors the medical schools and they influence what goes on in the medical schools, what products are sold. So business is, is, is a tremendous tool. And we, when we look at the life of Jesus, Jesus talked about business in the parable of the talents. You know, he was talking about investment and faithfulness and stewardship. So, um, and you know, I've been a business person all my life. I still own two businesses. Yep. And I'm always doing some kind of business. So I totally appreciate, identify, and salute the Kingdom Chamber of Commerce because it is a critical work. And it when it, not only is it advancing the kingdom, but you know, the kingdom is not for heaven. Come on. The kingdom is in heaven, but we bring it to earth. And what Jesus said is that we are supposed to have an abundant life. He also said, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So we are supposed to be beneficiaries of the kingdom on earth. And having business opportunities empowers us. Business is an empowerment tool. You know, when you own a business, you have influence. Come on. You, even even if, you, if you own a company, you can determine the atmosphere of that company. You know, I had... I had an employee of mine recently who went on the internet and was 
you know, Googling some, you know, sites and music that wasn't up to my standard. And I pulled up employee aside and I said, look, when you work in this company, this is the only type of music you are allowed to play. And if we ever find you putting something else in the atmosphere, you're going to be working at another job because I am the owner of this company and this is my policy. My policy is whatever we do, it has to be insp inspirational. There can't be no garbage about people killing one another and you know, all the other stuff that's out there. So through business, we can influence people's lives and we can advance the kingdom by directing them into you know kingdom principles yes 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 what do you say what do you say pastor dave about um you know other you know being a pastor and being a businessman what what, what can you shed any light on that well you know all of us ha have multiple gifts you know you have a primary gift and you have a primary assignment but none of us are really one-dimensional or designed to be one-dimensional you know, sometimes people have this idea that, well, okay, if I'm a pastor, then the only thing I can do is run a church. You know, one of the things that Dr. Monroe taught us was that when you are diversified, it allows you to move into arenas that the church can move into. You know, one of the things that he said to me uh, the year when he passed away, he said, because I was, I was starting my personal organization and i call it and i call it dave burrows ministries he said dave do not call it dave burrows ministries he said i speak in parliaments i speak to multinational corporations because i am miles monroe international come on you know i i am a senior pastor but i'm not limited to that and if i put myself in a hole then that's the only place people will find me. But, you know, we don't just have information to offer the church. We, the, the, the greatest opportunity um, that we have is when we can diversify. And so if you can, if you can enter a boardroom and you can have an oil company or a hotel calling you in and say, and saying that okay we need leadership and management advice but you're a pastor come on you know you can't limit yourself to a pastor and so i was a businessman from i was about um 12 years old and i've always been in business so business is a part of my calling mm -hmm. um being a pastor is is a part of my calling but being a, being a, a business person was my calling long before i became a pastor mm -hmm. An amazing businessman at it as well. Can you share real quickly um, before we let you go about, you know, just your relationship with Dr. Miles Monroe and, um, you know, because I know you guys go way, way, way back and and I could still remember one dinner that we had together and, um, and he looked on the lineup because he wasn't coming to us in October anymore. And he said, oh, Pastor Dave, be with you, man. It's just as if though I'm with you. You know, those words stayed with me, Pastor Dave, throughout the years. Those words have stayed with me. So for those who may be joining and they may not be familiar with who you are, can you just shed a little bit of light on that? And, um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the celebration that's coming up. Yes, um, I'm co-founder of BFM. So um, I met Dr. Monroe in college, even though we were from the Bahamas. And I, even, I, I used to hang out in the area that he lived in. We had never met because he was a preacher. I was a gangster. I didn't go to church. I didn't have any interest in church, uh, you know, but I went to college, got in some trouble. My sister was the first student at ORU. She invited Dr. Monroe to come to ORU. He went and then she invited me, you know, because I was in trouble and um, I went there not really thinking of ever being involved. I didn't even think I would be a Christian. I just wanted to get out of trouble. Um, but there I met Dr. Monroe. My life was changed. And when he returned to the Bahamas, he asked me to be a co-founder of Bahamas Faith Ministries. So I've been with Bahamas Faith Ministries from the beginning. 
I, I have been a youth ministry specialist. I was the first youth pastor, a global youth ministry specialist. And then I, I also was the vice president of Miles Monroe International, the first vice president of Miles Monroe International. So I ran his global operation. I ran the business of Miles Monroe International. So even while I served as youth pastor, I had dual roles. Wow. Wow. That's powerful. That's powerful. And, uh, and something's happening, um, you know, later, later this month, well, I guess next month it's, well, it's here. November is here. It is November. Yeah. You know, what's, what's, what's happening, what's happening at Bahamas Faith Ministries, um, next month, Pastor Dave. Well, we are commemorating 10 years since Dr. Monroe passed away. Wow, and what we what we have termed the month of November is Legacy Month. A theme that I came up with after Dr. Monroe passed away was we remember, we honor, we continue. And so we are taking a look back. We are remembering Dr. Monroe and the others who passed away. We are honoring persons who were critical in the fight over the years and then we are preparing new leadership to continue into the future so we have a number of events we have a special service we have a, a, a gala luncheon we have a concert with yolanda adams we have a fun run walk we have several events going on we have a special exhibition at the college of the bahamas where Dr. Monroe's memorabilia and writings will be on display. So, you know, it's it's um, it's an excellent uh, period of time where we are commemorating how God has brought us through 10 years. It's hard to believe that it's 10 years already, but God has been faithful to us and we have seen growth, we have seen development, we have seen new leaders emerge. So it's an exciting time. Wow. And, and, and Pastor Dave, just to see where you, where do you find yourself? I remember when your business was really moving forward and then suddenly everything came to a, a halt and then you were the one that was chosen for this role. From then to now, can you just, just summarize for us what that has been like for you and what's ahead? It's been an incredible journey. You know, the, the initial journey was very challenging, you know, losing your friends because everybody on the on the plane was my friend and I had a, a, a personal relationship with. So losing your friends and then having to take on the responsibility. So I took on the responsibility of Dr. Monroe, Dr. Pinder, and then the youth pastor. I had to run the entire operation. And so that was a big challenge. And then I also had my own personal business, which was, you know, created uh, uh, another significant challenge because I have all of this this new responsibilities and then I still have my business and then my business at the time was going through a major challenge because of some of the things that the government had done in terms of building roads in the area where my business was so it was very challenging but God gave me the grace to not only to overcome but to thrive so BFM has been thriving. We're not just surviving. We've been thriving. Um, you know, we are entering a new era. Uh, I'm releasing a book next uh, on the 10th. And the book is called Following a Legend. And it's about my journey after following Dr. Monroe. Whoa. Whoa. Well, we can't wait to get you back here on the show to talk about that because, yeah. you know, that's going to be good. That's going to be good. And I'm looking forward to seeing everyone as well, um, you know, in, in a few, in a week and a half, you know, excited about that. And um, and again, for folks that may be visiting the Bahamas, we definitely want them to come to BFM. And so can you just share uh, the, the service times for Bahamas Faith Ministries, even if they can't be there for the celebration, but you know, Bahamas is still the place where God lives, right? And so we want them to come over and, to, and, and be with the family. Yeah, our service time is 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. We, we just have one service. And so anyone who comes to the Bahamas, if you say BFM or Miles Monroe, people will know about it. Very, very few people in the Bahamas don't know about Miles Monroe and BFM. 
<laughs> and you, you know what is so interesting, Dr. Davis, we get ready to wrap is every, there's not a day that goes by that you don't hear his name. Wow, what a legend. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. You know, he has, his influence has increased since he has passed away. Yeah. It's amazing how many people that I've met in the last 10 years, especially in the last two or three years. And they've said to me, I never heard of Dr. Monroe before, mm -hmm. but I went on YouTube, I saw a video mm -hmm. and then they come to the Bahamas and they said, well, you know, you are my pastor. I come to be baptized. <laughs> so it's just amazing. You know, I, I mean, his, his, his vision and legacy is more powerful today than ever. And we continue with that vision, we continue to run with the vision. I agree. I agree. We just, we just are so thankful, and and um, we're thankful for the ministry, and we're thankful for you, and and um, and Pastor Angie. We're just, we're so grateful. Any final words, uh, Dr. Dave? Well, I, I I would like to add my congratulations again, and I want to encourage you to continue. You're doing a great work, and the Lord is blessing your faithfulness. And we expect increase. We expect favor, preferential treatment, unusual blessings, and abundant provisions and resources. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I receive it. I receive it. Love you much. Thank you so much for being on. And again, guys, Dr. Dave Barrow, Senior Pastor of Bahamas Faith Ministries. We love you, Dr. Dave. See you soon. God love bless. You. God bless. Wow, guys, that was just so amazing. So amazing. You know, to God be the glory. Many of you, you know, Dr. Miles have been here, um, have been an integral part of this vision. I remember right at the time that we met, we were Christian Chamber of Commerce when we first met Dr. Miles Monroe. And along this journey, how God has assigned and, you know, really set up every person that we will need in order to help us at the different phases of the vision and of the ministry. And so we went from Christian chamber, getting the revelation of what it is to be a part of a kingdom to then becoming the kingdom chamber of commerce. And so, you know, to God be the glory. We're so grateful and just so thankful 